Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about our AIS mapping efforts on U.S. inland waterways. Uh, to start off, some background to explain why I'm looking at vessel positions. What we call the navigation mission is building, then operating, and maintaining channels and harbors and structures like locks and dams. Uh, this is the blue on the upper map, and the lower map shows charting responsibility responsibility areas. No, NOAA in the U.S. produces charts for coastal areas, while the Corps of Engineers charts navigable inland waterways. The chart products that the Corps of Engineers produces are hard copy or paper chart books and electronic navigation charts or ENCs. These are specific to inland waterways and are called IENCs, the I being inland. IENC products are encoded in S57 and available to the public for free. So switching up uh, from the responsibilities to the main data source for this talk, uh, Automatic Identification Systems, or AIS, is an international standard that defines various communications for ship-to-ship, ship-to-shore, and shore-to-ship scenarios using VHF frequencies to encode uh, several types of information. We're using the basic vessel position message containing location coordinates, speed, course, heading, uh, and other information. This map shows the land-based network of AIS transceivers in portions of the US. Uh, the overall system is run by the Coast Guard with their stations showed in blue but the, the Corps of Engineers maintains several sites along inland waterways, uh, the tan dots and the red dots, uh, and they feed into the Coast Guard's database. Um, these are the primary source of the data that I'm, I've been using. This map shows uh, uh, an initial effort that our New Orleans district started uh, 10 years ago. Um, they started looking at AIS data to try and ground truth their sailing line in the charts, uh, or also known as the recommended track in, um, in charting parlay. Uh, the density plot that you see uh, of aggregated vessel position reports turned out to be very useful and inspired a broader mapping effort across the INC areas. Uh, since that time, we've scaled up that effort to include areas covered by IENC products, which you, show, you see in the blue, um, on an annual basis. We request annually the data from the Coast Guard, as well as some internal sites that aren't yet connected to the NAIS. For this effort, we do not aggregate or filter positions by time, since the level of detail required in a riverine environment uh, to map channel traffic is, is really high, so we get all the positions. Uh, a slide that I saw here on Tuesday from the data science group said 80% of data science effort is preparing the data for analysis, and that is definitely true of this effort too. Uh, the work is currently done on a workstation using desktop software. Python is used to automate the various processing steps. Once prepared, the process to map is conceptually simple. Converting table records to point features and deriving raster data sets from those points and attributes. We also enrich the AIS data by using a reference line to determine whether that particular vessel position record uh, represents a vessel going in an upstream direction or a downstream direction. Uh, and that's used later on in um, mapping and analysis. Uh, so the last raster layers produced include several aspects of the uh, point distributions, and those are shown here. Uh, the densities are just counts of position records, and then we average uh, a couple different uh, attributes that are in those records. Each of those raster types is published as a tile layer on ArcGIS Online, and those are all publicly available. All 
All layers are individually available for use, and they are also added to a web map with several IENC reference layers available. And that map also drives a web app, which includes several off-the-shelf widgets to help view the data layers. And those are both publicly visible. As to how we use the data, uh, we've found, we found several ways. Uh, the primary purpose of evaluating the recommended track geometry is shown here. Uh, the old features have been updated to better reflect an actual vessel track with high fidelity. We've also been able to use map layers to verify and delineate other chartable features. Here you can see various mooring and loading activity um, along the, the river channel. Uh, and, and it includes uh, fleeting of barges in off-channel areas. So those are um, entities that are hard to geographically map the extents, and we can kind of do that with this data. Uh, finally, uh, by doing this mapping effort every year, you can see changes in traffic patterns, uh, such as this shift in the navigation channel. 